Well, there's a great saying that politics and sport don't mix. One person who's put the lie to that uh, joins me now on the Gym Sport Go podcast, cartoonist Tom Scott. Tom, thanks so much for your time. Uh, as I say, I've always chuckled when people say that politics and sport don't mix because for you, uh, they've mixed on the page on numerous occasions. They do. I, I love entwining them uh, and they mix in all sorts of areas. I'm, I was active in the anti-apartheid movement and I did a lot of cartoons on, on apartheid, anti-apartheid and um, yeah, uh, I got thrown out of uh, a trip to Melbourne for a chogum by Muldoon. So politics and sport do mix. You, you've also that was, a, that was a very clumsy answer there. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. You've also drawn a, a, about just sport, though, haven't you? I remember um, you used to have two old fellas sitting on a park bench, and they'd they'd discuss the All Blacks quite a bit. You you, you like drawing about sport without a political I bent. I do, and I think it gives the audience a break. And a Monday morning after a test match, um, it's quite good to do a cartoon on sport because it it just breaks the monotony of always being political. Plus. There's a lot of fun and comedy uh, doing sports cartoons. I did a cartoon about Stephen Donald, you know, a nightmare, a guy waking up in the middle of the, in the middle of the night, and he was saying to his wife, "I had that nightmare again." Stephen Donald was li- lining up to kick the winning goal in the World Cup final, <laughs> and uh, it turned out to be true. That there was a cartoon that was sort of prescient. And Stephen, I interviewed Stephen for when I did the show, that wrote the uh, screenplay for the television movie. The kick, and uh, Stephen forgave me, and I think he, I think he owns the original. I think he'll regate the time. Has there been a sporting figure that you've most liked to draw about? I know that Laurie Maines was someone that you, you'd have regular cracks at. <laughs> well, it's amazing. I did a lot of cartoons critical of him, but even now and again, I would do one, do a few that were on his side, and they were the ones he always requested. So when I see him, he's very, very friendly. I used to have lots of cracks at. Um, at heart as well, uh, and uh, I've done quite a few on um, Steve Hansen. And when I was in hospital recently, or two years ago, now, having heart surgery, I got a lovely note from Steve Hansen. He's a very, he's a terrific manager of men. He certainly uh, is. Steve Hansen. If, I, if I can say something sporting here, Jim, uh, I, once, I had, comment, had lunch with him once, and I was saying that when you're a policeman, you inherit a squadron. You don't get a chance to select them. What Henson learned as a top cop, and he was a top cop, was that he had to get the best out of all of these disparate people, these strangers, and make them all work as a team. So he learnt those skills early on as a cop. So when he could pick his own team, he was even better still. Yeah. Well, you were a, a young boy growing up in rural Manawatu. Were you a sporting person, Tom? Did you play sport yourself? Um, well, I, I have um, alternating monocular vision. I don't see the world in 3D. I didn't know this. I used to found reversing, still, reversing a car, a parallel park is a nightmare for me. I don't know how far the car is behind me. I can't judge distances. I can't reach down to pick up a sock without missing it three or four times. So I was a natural prop. I inevitably got pushed into prop, but I was quite strong. And so, um, you know, people wanted me in their teams. But the trouble was I was also a heavy little bugger. And when I got on the scales, I was always playing with people who were two or three years older than me, so I got knocked around a bit, but I loved it. Not that I was very good, but I absolutely loved going off to Saturday morning football and to my luck at Kauai Park, the first time I turned up at about six, cycling in the four miles, I got picked to be in the All Blacks. There was the Wallabies and the Springboks and (laughs) all the teams, and I got to wear a little wee black jersey with a fern on it, so... I have been in All Black, even if it was only the junior grade in fielding. Uh, lovely. Who were your heroes when you were a young fella? Sporting heroes? Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I went to watch the Lions in 1959 play against a combined man or two Horathanua selection, and Murray Ball ah. played centre. He played centre for the Horathanua, and uh, I was sitting on a wooden plank watching the game because it was a wet ground. We all t- had to bring a wooden plank with us. And I saw, as Murray himself said to me years later, he said, I was marking the great Lions winger, Tony O'Reilly, who was half man, half horse. He said, sometimes O'Reilly just beat me with sheer speed on the outside. Other times he had this massive sidestep, and he just shot inside me and made me look foolish. And when he got bored with that, he just ran over top of me. And so Murray was a hero because shortly after that, he, his cartoons started appearing, and 
in the in many or two times, and uh, he did lots of cartoons on sport. And so Nairi was one of my early, early heroes, definitely. And of course, the Lions come here soon. You'd be looking forward to that. You'd be predicting a, an all a comprehensive All Blacks uh, series win. Well, I was in the at the Caton when Dan Carter played the best game of his life when, during the last Lions tour, and I. Uh, I can't afford it. I may have to sell my house to get a ticket to this one. I'll be watching from home, unfortunately. But I think the um, I, I think All Blacks will, will prevail. Not that I'm blindly loyal, but I think at the end of their season, when they're all tired and worn out and they'll be pickering, they can't, they don't get on, those four countries. So I think um, there's a good chance we will prevail. Oh, I hope you're right. Do you have a sporting moment in, in, in your life, one that perhaps you've drawn about or not even drawn about, just witnessed? Uh, well, it was a, in the middle of the night when the Jonah Lomba try, uh, the famous time uh, against the English, when uh, Keith Quinn was just reduced to, ah, oh, you, you sounded like a woman on, on, a, on a bridal night. Ah, 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 Lomba. Uh, well, I was watching it with Avril. Then the phone went. It was my brother-in-law, Grant, who's a, he was a superintendent, Grant O'Fee, and head of the Nelson Tasman Police District. The phone just went. And he didn't even introduce himself. He just he just screamed down the phone. Did you see that? Did you see that? That guy would have muscles in his pop. And he hung up. And I thought, muscles in his pop. That's right. That's what Jonah had. He had muscles in his pop. That is one of my favourite sporting moments. It was just priceless. Oh, wonderful. And what about your your beloved Hurricanes? Uh, they're they're having a good start to the season. Can you see them going back to back? Yes, I can. And what a, they've finally got a really good coach. He he was a chemist and he's a thinker. And when they, when they, you would have thought the Hurricanes would have won with Tana and Christian Cullen and Ma Nonu and all those great players, but they never fulfilled the early potential. And I don't think they were ever well coached. We had to pull up with that appalling guy from Christchurch who everyone was saying was changing the team culture. Mark Hammett. I, you've specified his name, I was going to avoid it. I mean, he was probably a decent enough guy, but he turns up, apparently, and uh, they were playing a game of touch rugby, this is according to the legends, and I, I interviewed Ma for the uh, for the kick program, though we didn't cover that. And he, they were playing touch rugby, and Ma just tackled someone, which you're not supposed to do, and Mark kind of parps on his whistle, go to the, you know, off you go, off you go, he's got... He scolded Ma Nonu for just jokingly teasing a mate in the game of touch rugby, which is not man management. And um, uh, he didn't handle the, the Hurricanes at all well. And uh, Boyd is doing a superb job. And you listen to his after-match comments. He doesn't brag in, in victory, and he's not sour and bitter in defeat. And he's just a really, really impressive man. A bit like you know, Joe Smith, the Kiwi who's coaching Ireland, and a bit like Rennie and, and the Chiefs. So there are a lot of good coaches in New Zealand, and I don't think any of the good coaches have been were all black. So there's something about you don't have to be a great player to uh, to be a great coach. In fact, it, the reverse may be true. Yeah, absolutely. Just to wrap up, has there been a sporting person that you've delighted in, in drawing? Oh, well, gee. Um, Ilomo was good to draw, and Colin Meese was good to draw. Christian Cullen was too good looking. Now, Jim, if you'd been in all black, oh, man, the fun I would have had drawing you. That great big craggy face. Uh, you would have been a joy. But you weren't good enough. You were a good enough player, but you weren't good enough to be in all black. And you robbed me of a golden opportunity. I'm quite bitter about this, actually. Now, I'm glad you raised the subject. No, Jonah was... was um, just just wonderful, just wonderful to draw and wonderful to watch. He was indeed. Tom, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, mate. Cheers.